28th edition of the Uber Cup, with 15 teams participating in the men's event and 16 in the women's. This afternoon, we'll be bringing you action, of course, from the men's teams championship here on court one. And it is going to be a very, very interesting day for Team Netherlands who take on China in the Thomas Cup. Uh, that's what's coming up on court one. First, so let's take a look at the tournament schedule. We're into day four here with another day of group stage action still to come. That's tomorrow. Then on Thursday, we have Thomas Cup group stage and Uber Cup quarterfinals. On Friday, we have more quarterfinals from the Thomas Cup this time, and we go into the semi-finals of the Uber Cup. On Saturday, it's the Thomas Cup semi-finals, and the big one, the Uber Cup final. And finally, closing it off, it will be the Thomas Cup final on Sunday. So here's a look at how the groups stand or stack up. Group A, topping with 13-time winners Indonesia, in second are 1961 finalist Thailand, followed by Chinese Taipei and African champions Algeria. On Group B, we have two-time silver medalist Korea leading, as well as followed by host nation Denmark, and then Germany and France. Group C, who will be featured right here on court two shortly, comprise of a reigning champions China. They're on top, followed by India, followed by the Netherlands, who are also going to come on court shortly, and debutants Tahiti. Group D has uh, the 2018 runners-up Japan, five-time champions Malaysia and Canada. We're into the afternoon session here on Court 1 and we have witnessed the Uber Cup tie between Thailand and Spain which went 5-0 to the ties. Coming soon is the Thomas Cup Group C matchup between China and Netherlands and then the evening session will witness the epic showdown between China and Denmark in the Uber Cup. Up next, though, it is the 10-time champions and the current title holders, China, in action. Well, they'll be taking on the 2020 European men's team silver medalist, Netherlands, and be looking to make it two wins in two. It is the second time that the Dutch team have qualified for the Thomas Cup. The last time they played was in 1998. So, how do the teams line up? In the first singles match, it will be Lu Guangzhou of China taking on Yuran Kuekel. That's the first match. Then it will be the first of the men's doubles. He Jiting and Zhao Haodong taking on Ruben Yile and Thies van der Leck. Men's singles rubber number two sees Li Shifeng take on Robin Messman. And in the men's doubles second rubber, we have Liu Cheng and Wang Yi Lu take on Andy Boric and Brian Vassink. The final match off the tie is the third of the singles, and that sees Wang Hong Yang lock horns with Guy Stories. So the first of the men's singles is going to get us going, and that's between Lu Guangzhou of China take on Joran Kuekel of the Netherlands. And we're just about to see the players walk on court. And there is Chinese women, men's singles, number one player in this tie against the Netherlands. That is Lu Guangzhou taking to the court. He is uh, in fine form, Lu Guangzhou. He has uh, played in the Suderman Cup uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Finland and now in the Thomas Cup. His opponent today will be Joran Kuekel of the Netherlands. The 23 year old will be looking to put Netherlands in the lead. Surprise everyone, that's what he will be hoping for. Joining me in the commentary hot seat is Australian national Gronja Somerville. Gronja, this is going to be an interesting matchup between the two. Yeah, I think it'll be a great match ahead of us to look forward to. Lu Guangzhou is doing strong, he was runner up at the Chinese nationals 
and going to be a good fight here from Euron, I reckon. Well, we see the umpire there uh, getting ready for the toss. Luke Guangzhou choosing to receive. That means Euron Kweko will serve as the players get ready to warm up. And uh, Lu Guangzhou, as I mentioned, he was at the Sudaman Cup just recently in Vanta with Team China and he's won the gold with them, of course. Uh, now looking to make his mark on the Thomas Cup, age 24 years old, 178 centimeters tall, born in Jiangsu, China. His uh, current ranking is 27 in the men's singles, but he's broken into the top 20 before, ranked 19 in the world. And uh, with the Chinese setup, he normally uh, is playing in the second singles uh, position after Xi Yuqi, but today they have given him the responsibility to lead China. Yoran Kweikel there, just 23 years of age, 194 centimeters tall, he's a tall man, and ranked 86 in the men's singles. His highest ranking has just been one up in 85. He's uh, born and bred in the Netherlands. So, Grania, this is a do or die match for the Netherlands. Uh, China having won their tie against Tahiti in the first round 5-0 very easily. Netherlands on the other hand lost to India 5-0, so this is do or die. The umpire there, George and John from Brunei, and he'll be joined by the service judge who is Henrik Boas from Denmark. And there he is, the service judge, and they'll be officiating the match today. As I was saying, it is do or die for the Netherlands, so it's almost very, very important that Joran gets off to a good start. Yeah, I mean, they have a, a tough task ahead of them. You know, China is such a, a powerhouse, but they really have nothing to lose, so they just need to play with all they've got and, yeah, just give it their best for sure. And, you know, being the Netherlands, knowing they're taking on China, I bet there were a couple of uh, jitters last night going to bed. How, would, how does a player deal with that? Um, well, I've always found when I play someone who is, you know, quite highly ranked, then I'm just more excited than, I guess, nervous. I, I, I personally feel a bit more nervous if I'm the, the favourite or have that expectation because then there's the fear of losing. Whereas, yeah, the Netherlands here, they really have nothing to lose, so they just got to give it everything they can. And Joran Kweikel will certainly be looking to do that, put his best foot forward right from the start. And uh, keeping himself calm and collected will be key here because uh, Lu Guangzhou is much higher ranked. He's currently 27 in the world, but you know, he's done really well uh, a couple of years back, 2019, 2018. He was really climbing up the ranks. He won the Australian Open in 2018, the Canada Open, for example, in 2018. So, you know, he's got a lot of matches under his belt. And you, in comparison to Joran Kweikel, who plays, uh, uh, of course, on tour, but more on the international level, on the challenger level. So there's a difference in levels there, of course, and the type of competitors you face. Yeah, but that has also meant that Joran, over the last two years during the pandemic, has had the opportunity of playing more international competition throughout Europe, whereas a lot of the China team haven't traveled to even, you know, some of the big Super Series tournaments that, or, um, that have run. So he does have that little bit of, you know, travel and international competition experience ahead of Lu Guangzhou at the moment. So we saw it. Var Lau. Liu Guangzhou from China looking to make this a simple victory for his team as uh, they have a much part of group match that will come in the third and final tie, so they want to be secured with the knockouts by then, they don't have to worry about that. So that will be playing on his mind for sure. Yeah, I'm sure Lu Gonzu will be feeling a little bit more pressure and you can see when he won that first point how he shouted that he is trying to, you know, assert his dominance from the beginning and really get China off to a good start.
He mixed it up really well there, Lu Guangzhou. He's challenged that. It was called in. It looks very close. The shuffle is slow moving here, so they do make, you know, when they decide to leave it, it does cause, sometimes, it does cause them concern with being the wrong decision. Yep, so that is in. Good call by the one judge. Two, one, play. Oh, it was a great cross court net shot to set up that smash from Mu Guangzhou. Yeah, really well played there. He was in total control, taking the net super early. Unlucky there from Lu Guangzhou. He was uh, looking for that drop shot off the net, but it found the net instead, falling on his side of the court. Euron Quakel doing well at the moment to keep pace with his opponent. I like that he went for that, even though he didn't pull it off. I think it will keep. That will just, you know, stay in Lu Guangzhou's mind next time he thinks about netting. And it's good that Yoran had that um, aggression at the net. There is some duck support in the crowds. Urging Yoran on. Another net error, unfortunately, from uh, Yuran Quakel. That means Lu Guangzhou is two points up. For Lu Guangzhou, he's been in the shadows of Chen Long, Shi Yu Chi, for quite some time in his career. I mean, he's still young, he's only 24, but you know, he, even though he emerged on the scene in the last five years, he's always almost played second fiddle to the Chinese greats, especially Chen Long, I'd say, and then Shi Yu Chi. So, this is really a time for him to make his mark. Yeah, definitely. I think it's been quite different with the pandemic, you know, in the last two years, if tournaments were back to normal, he could have had some breakthrough tournaments and, you know, done well in some super series, that kind of thing, and shown, um, I guess, his his comparison to Shi Yuqi and Chen Long. But um, it's good he's getting this opportunity now to, you know, play the, the number one singles in some of these Thomas Cup matches, and with Chen Long kind of slowing down a little bit. It's definitely that time for the China team to transition through to some of the younger guys, which we, we see later on in the other men's singles and the men's doubles as well. Yes, the Chinese team is certainly in the middle of transitions in various uh, disciplines, the men's doubles being the other one. And we've seen how they mixed it up at the Sudaman Cup, trying different combinations, especially and um, because Li and Liu, Li Jinwei and Liu Jin didn't, has not traveled with the team. They have not traveled with the team. So they were trying different combinations and men's doubles as well. So this Chinese team in a way is not as maybe strong or not as gelled together as previous versions of this team. Super rally there. Yoran did really well to get that back. 38 shots. The rally between Lu and Yuran, who's doing well to keep the shuttle in play. Thank you.
This is a big opportunity for the Dutch men's team. You know, it's only the second ever Thomas Cup. Uh, the for last one being in 98, as I had mentioned earlier. So it's a really big opportunity for them to show where they're at as, as a nation, as a badminton nation, and also match their own levels to the higher ranked opponents. Three, four. Good body smash there, caught your on off guard. Great smash. He's doing really well. Just try and stay in that point. At the end, it didn't work out. He couldn't return that smash that came off Lu Guangzhou's record. But you know, staying in these kind of rallies will be important for Kweko. Yeah, for sure. I think he's keeping up really well at the moment and it's just Lu Guangzhou is able to get into those dominating positions there with a bit of a shorter lift and really take full advantage of it, whereas Yoran needs to try and make some of those opportunities for himself. So Lu Guangzhou now just two points to try and get to the mid-game break. The Empire just telling Yoran to... Hurry it up a little. I was well left by Quakel there. So we saw one, five, nine. Him with a little flick. Oh, he was so close. I mean, that would have been a really nice play by Lu Wang, who had that chuck across the net. It was the right strategy. Do you think now, you know, these kind of mistakes are, are a sign of nerves or a little bit of pressure? Um, I think that was just a good shot. <laughs> And then he was trying to play quite a tough shot back himself. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. He is able to get that little bit more angle because he is so tall there. But I mean, Lu Guangzhou would train, train against Chen Long as well, who's also quite tall, so. shot there just had so much spin on it it was really hard for Johan to um, control there. So Lu Guangzhou now just one point away from taking the lead at the mid-game break. Nice. He's doing really well. He's, he's really pushing him to those corners and getting those short lifts in the last few points and he's executing his smashes right to the edges as well. There were a few in the early rallies where they were kind of just coming back too, too much around Lou's reach, and now he's hitting those as winners. This is the first meeting between these two men. So while, uh, oh, this time he did not give him a chance. Lu Wangju takes the lead at the mid-game break, 11-8. There you go, 11 minutes is what it took for the Chinese singles player to take the lead. But it was a good performance also from Yoram Kweko. He's a little separating the two at the moment, which he will be really happy about. Yeah, I think he'll just need to try and keep it up while Lu 
we'll probably try and come with a, a few more weapons, maybe try and speed it up a little bit more or change his tactics. So we'll need to see what he comes with and adapt quickly. There you go, it's a repeat at that point. This is a great drop shot. <laughs> so steep. And then he follows it up with the kill shot. Make no mistake there. Those are the thing, kind of shots that will be really effective against someone, you know, of your own height. You know, he's a little bit challenged in agility, I guess, having to move such a big body around. So really making him stretch to those front corners and then pushing him back is a way to take advantage of that. We want you to serve at the restart of the first game, leading 11-8. This time it was Joran with the aggressive shot at the net. Just making the run and smashing it down. And uh, you know he's you know he can use his height to generate that kind of power. You know while his movement might be a little bit more affected, but using his height it also prove, you know helps him generate a lot of power with his smashes. Oh, right on the line. That was a beautiful smash. He seemed to get caught off guard at, for a second by Lou's lift back over him. He was ready to follow up on the first smash. But he just got, look at that angle. Even though it was behind him, that snap. Right on the line. And now it's just a one point game between these two. Just missed that, Lu Guangzhou. Lucky Yoron just missed that as well. He swung <laughs> for it. <laughs> A comedy of errors, that one. But I'm sure Yoron Quickle will take the point. Ah, that's a silly error to make there. As I mentioned, these two haven't met before, and. Uh, Joran must have studied Guangzhou's game quite thoroughly when you prepare for matches like these. Uh, I believe the coaches go through opponents who haven't played quite intensely using video, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So especially a player like Lu Guangzhou will have a lot of stuff out there, you know, just on YouTube online. Um, seeing him play different kind of opponents, maybe an opponent that might play similar to Joran's game. Um, would be yeah great to see the tactics he uses and ways he can exploit him. He's taking the lead now. Impressive run of points. Yes, he was 11-8 down at the break. He's taking a 13-12 lead now. This time the arrow coming off uh, Quickle's racket in similar fashion. to run his opponent around there. Thank you, Lu Guangzhou. Yeah. Just that drop shot, and then quick push to the corner. Just lovely. So it's really seeming here, whoever gets the lift is able to take advantage and usually win the point. So it is really about that kind of flat front court control game and trying to get that lift first. Fourteen, thirteen. Oh, unfortunate error there from Quaco. He's looking for a tight net shot there. 
hoping that his opponent would be late in coming forward, but didn't work out. That's out. So Lu Guanju slowly but surely taking control of this first game. 16-13 up now. It's just five points away from uh, clinching it. These next couple of points are going to be crucial for Euron Quaker to try and fight back. Quaker doing well so far, but in the end, Lu Guangzhou proving too strong. Just fantastic smash across the court coming from Lu Guangzhou there. Quaker struggling to make it. 369 corner smash. He's putting all his power in that smash, Lu Guangzhou. And he's now opened up a four-point gap in this uh, first game. Quakel in his uh, previous matchup in the Thomas Cup played Shrikan Kidambi. And uh, did pretty well there to put up a fight. Losing in straight games, of course, but got, you know, 21-12, 21-14. He got a few points to go in there. And that will give him confidence going into this match against Guangzhou. I think the way he's played so far as well will definitely give him confidence knowing that he can play at this level and have these sorts of rallies. He left it. And unfortunately that was out for Lu Guangzhou. It was a good decision by Quakel, Quakel of course, but uh, Guangzhou hoping that he just found the line there. Narrowly missed that one. Again, trying to get that net shot. 40, 40. Just keeping it tight at the net is not quite working out for him. And now Lu Guangzhou is just two points away from closing out this first game. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> I think he's happy with that. A little that bit of a stand out. <laughs> what a way to set up game point. 2014. A little hole at the net there, and then that finger power just punching it into the corner. Mm, kind of left it too late there in the. Lu Guangzhou, and it's allowed Quakel to come up to the net for the kill shot. So it's 15-20. He saved one game point, Euron Quakel. He's got five more to go. That's what Lu Guangzhou is very good at. Finishing things off neatly. 21-15 in this first game. He'll be overall pretty happy with that performance. Yeah, I think he had a pretty steady game and found, like, throughout the game, getting to know Yoran a bit better. 
That's 20 minutes. That first game, 21-15 to Lou Hanju. His coach, of course, is now briefing him on what he could do better in that. From that, learn from that first game. The things that seem most effective are his quick follow-ups when he's able to, like we saw on that last point, have the nice steep angle, get Yoran out of position and then quickly follow up and bring in a cross-court shot with Yoran having to recover quickly and not be able to, as we'll see here. That's the game point there. Moved him really well. And then just uh, really nice and early there from the bomb too. And a beautiful tight cross net. Stretching the ball out completely to try and get to that shot. I think the, the little things like the holes of the net, Lubangu can use his skills a little bit more to make the court bigger for your own, so some holes in the net, some changes of direction when they're unexpected against a big guy like your own, that will kind of mess up his flow and his movement a little bit. The players get ready to back, get back on court for the second game. This is the Group C encounter between China and Netherlands. Lu Guangzhou taking the first game 21-15. And uh, looking to Play. close up this match in two, if possible. Lu Guangzhou to serve. That was really well played by Iron Cueco on the back court. He attacked with a powerful cross court jump smash there that uh, Guangzhou found hard to return, finding the net instead. So, first blood goes to Cueco in this second game. there. Lou just opening up the court a bit too soon with that push while he was still on that side of the court. You're unable to take advantage of it, just push it down the line. Oh, that was unfortunate. After two good points, that was a cheap one to give away from Euron Quakel. between the two men. Some more faster exchanges in this rally that have gone into a little bit, little bit of driving. Both have handled it pretty well. Again, really good play from Joran Kweikel here. And unfortunately, just at the end there. That was 27 shots at rally. He did really well to maintain his level. Right at the end there, it uh, was a mistake at the net. But I mean, nothing to take away from Lu Guangzhou as well. No, that was a great rally. I think it's, it's the longer ones where Lu will come out on top a bit more of the time. He's used to you know, maintaining that high intensity, long duration rally for, for longer in his training and in his match experience. But Joran's doing really well to stay in it. Oh, 
the Empire having a little chat with Lu Wangzhu about hurrying up. We're seeing some quite we have seen some light touches from the Dutch player at the net before he goes for the skill shots at the end, which is uh, lovely to see. Yeah, he is trying to get into this driving situation a lot more. We've seen in the last two points. So I think that's a change of tactics that he's had since the first game. And he came off better in that one. And, you know, with such a big reach, he is quite good at covering that hard flat game. And it looks like his skills and speed are up to the challenge as well. He's taking a two point lead in the second game. Attacking more at the net, coming up with those quick net exchanges, putting the pressure on Kuekel to make the mistakes. As you saw there, there's uh, some dead support in the stadium today. Great rally. This is a good one. Some awkward foot, foot, footwork by Lou there, but he stayed in it. Again, great movement by Lou Guanju, covering the court. That was the longest uh, rally so far in the match, 42 shots, but he, Really good court coverage, really moving well, Lu Guangzhou, at that point. And you can kind of see at the end of that rally that Lu looks pretty fresh still, whereas Yoran had that kind of sloppy dive for the last shot. So I think the, you know, the mat fit, match fitness and that the intensity that these rallies are being playing at can be seen. Yeah, Yoran Kweko, um has played uh, at the Spain Masters this year. He's played at the Orleans Masters this year. EU individual championships as well, all reaching the round of 16 or thereabouts. So, you know, this will be a real test for him um, against China, against Lu Guangzhou, who is, you know, number two in terms of, you know, Chinese men's singles at the moment. Chen Long is in the mix, but not as much. After the Olympics, he's taking a well-deserved break. So this is probably the biggest test of uh, his levels. You're on Kweko. He was, though, a part of the Netherlands team that uh, finished runners-up at the team championships last year in France. They surprised quite a few people uh, coming up on top ahead of England and France to finish second, get to the final where they eventually lost to Denmark. But you know, they beat France 3 2 in the semi finals, they beat England 3 2 in the quarterfinals. So they've done really well to establish themselves as a strong European group. And he'll be hoping to use or draw upon that experience from those team events where he's had tough long matches and use it here. He's challenged that. He thought that was gone out. It was called in. I thought that one was out. <laughs> Ooh, are you gonna take a are you gonna take a guess here? Yeah, I'm confident. <laughs> I'm confident. <laughs> 
and that was out. So maybe you should do the challenges from now. <laughs> yeah, you've lost all credibility in your previous previous matches that you've commentated. <laughs> That's a quickle back in the lead here at six five. Now when it's getting into that driving game, Lou is just stepping forward slightly as it as he hits it, taking that time away from Quakel who still wants to drive back hard. So it'd be good to see Quakel like take the pace out a little bit sooner or try and go over him as opposed to hitting it back to where exactly where he wants, driving it back at him. That was out. It looked like it was going out. I was like, that definitely looked like it was going out. I waited for the judge, though. The line just to signal that was out. You started out confident, then your, your following sentence was a I was, little bit I was doubting myself, yeah. like the players often do on the court. <laughs> Did well to get that. For a tall player, he's moving pretty well. You're on Cueco. Yes. That, that was beautiful. Was tight. It's really nicely played. Just there it is. Just guarding it across. Landing before the service line. That's very, it's a very tight pull shot there. And so Quakel now, 8-6, three points away from taking a lead for the mid-game break. If he can do that, that will be a huge boost for him. Beautiful cross net. And this time, it was all aggression from Lu Guangzhou. He wanted that point badly. Just really well hit. So one for our game now. That's a great rally again. Both men trying their hardest to get those points, and it was Euron Quakel who came on top of that. His net touched the end, just clipping the net. He seems to be. He's been told that he needs to ask if he wants to change the shuttle. Rallies seem to have taken a little bit of a steam out of uh, Lu Guangzhou. They've taken a little bit of energy out of him. They've zapped him a bit. There you go. Fantastic play from your own Kuekol. Super follow-up here. Just sprinting forward. And that smash just Lu Guangzhou couldn't get any quality in it. He just had to try and get it over. And now... You're on Quakel, just one point away 
from going into the mid-game break with a lead, a good lead. It's moving so well. Just not enough time to get back up on his feet. Sometimes I think the commentator's jinx does have an effect because just when you think he's moving so well and then it you know catches him off on the floor but Bjorn Quickel has certainly done really well to be in the lead here. Lou just needs to try and maintain that aggressive play. That's why he's winning his points. Great work from your own Quay call. He's moving his opponent around. And he's four Sierra off Lu Guangzhou's racket to make it 11-8 at the break. This is a really good showing from your own Quay call in the second game, leading 11-8 after 17 minutes on court. He's really happy with that. Yeah, I think he's playing amazingly. He's making the court really big for Lou. He's not giving him that many opportunities to attack, and his defense is pretty solid when, when it is coming to him. He just has to maintain this level. It's now a question of how long he can maintain this ball. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we'll definitely see here in the second half of the game. Because Lou is going to try and step it up, and it'll just be a matter of if Joran can maintain the level that he's at now and not let any you know, easy mistakes slip in and try and keep up the pace. The coach taking a couple of extra seconds to make sure that uh, Lou picks up his game a little bit in this uh, second game. He's 8-11 down. It's just a three-point game for this. Plenty of work to do here for China. So Yuran Koekel will serve at the start of this, at the restart of the second game. Oh, that was a nice deceptive cross drop. Jumping up super high, making it look like a smash to the last second, taking the pace out and just guarding that cross. That was beautiful. Blue didn't even try to get that. <laughs> yeah, you did not see that coming. That's good defending there from Euron. He's just... just Let's missed that. It was very close. He was aiming for the lines. So Lou will be starting to feel a little bit of pressure here and really trying to narrow his focus on these next few points to try and narrow the gap. He's asking uh, the umpire warning Lou going to, to keep playing. Taking too long right now. Trying to regroup Li Guanzhou. Li Guanzhou. Two big smashes there from Yoran. Again, this is a little, these are the little mistakes that's going to play on Lu Guanzhou's mind a little bit. Where the points are a bit running away from him. It's now a four point gap between yeah. the two. Yeah, and he should be worried with the, the quality that's coming from Yoran. He's, he's hitting all the shots. And that's why he has to bring a response if he's going to stay in it. 
Powerful jump smash from Lu Guangzhou to close the gap. And that looked effortless from Yuran Cueco. Stepping back to hit that hard across the court. He makes it look easy. And I'm sure with, you know, with all these team championships, given how China have dominated these events, and the player takes to a court and he's down and he's not necessarily playing his best badminton, all these, the pressure then mounts even higher. Yeah, and Lo does have that pressure of um, having the responsibility of stepping up to being the men's singles number one and at against a team that they are favourites to win as well. So I think he'll be getting worried. It's now a five-point lead. Euron Quakel has opened up here in the second game. This time, the smash finding the net. A little unlucky there. It looked like Lou is turning to coaches sitting in the, the stands and not the coach sitting in the, <laughs> the coaching seat. I'm sure there are quite a few voices that are coming at him at the moment. Really has been impeccable play from Euron Quakel. He's been matching Lu Guangzhou shot for shot. That was looked a little out. <laughs> that that was a lot of that was. <laughs> that looked a little out. But Euron has challenged that, so I'm gonna wait for Hawkeye to confirm the decision. Hey, one for me, finally. <laughs> did you call it out though? I did, I did you? Look to the <laughs> So, an unsuccessful challenger from Euron Cueto means Lu Guangzhou has made this a three-point game. And uh, slowly fighting back. But you, you see that Euron Quakel is matching Lu Guanzhou shot for shot for most of these big rallies. That was a 25 shot rally there and you know he matched Lu Guanzhou's pace and his position for most of it. Making Lou run back and forth and just doing it so well. Yoran is reading those cross nets now and just able to capitalize, push it over Lou and then take advantage with that shot there. I think Lou is running out of solutions right now. Starting to look a little defeated. You can see a little shake of the head, trying to, you know, pep himself up. It's a five-point gap that he needs to fill very quickly now. 
to get to the business end of this game. Again, fantastic play. Such uh, light touches. That was a great net shot. We call that um, a fishing net shot. So it's like when you throw the fishing hook and you loop it over and it just dunks in just over the net. Oh, he went for that same shot that he hit a winner on previously. Didn't pull it off this time. He's still got a five-point cushion, Bjorn Quaco. Can he capitalize? This time a little bit more aggressive hitting Four from Lu Guanju at the net. Pushing his opponent back a little bit there. I feel like Lou needs to take a little bit more initiative and go for some of those chances. He's been a bit passive. Finding the net as Lou pumps up his fist and hopes that this is the start of a turnaround. Euron just slipping, I think his back foot slipped out from under him. I think he's a little frustrated at the umpire maybe for not letting them towel down earlier. Yeah. There you go. Just yeah, the, the left foot just slipped back a few centimeters, meaning he had nothing to push off to get forward. They do look pretty sweaty out there. The, the stadium is quite hot and humid. Unlike the weather outside. <laughs> yeah. But uh, still a two-point cushion now uh, for Euron Kweko to try and push this match into a three-game match. And uh, Lu Guangzhou, on the other hand, will be hoping that Having picked up the last three points. He can close the gap even further. Like that. That's good aggressive play from Lou there. Following up nice and quick after the shots, going for a bit more angle and there it just pulled it off as you can see. It has been surprising that we haven't seen him play that way more in this match like you know just mixing it up and finding those steep angles you know finding the lines of the court Good. one point separating the two Lu Wangju has won four in a row Level. Liu Guangzhou back just in the nick of time as we hit 18 all in the second game. Look how much it means to him. Yoran just missing his chance there. 
good he went through it, but the shuttle was just pointing in the wrong direction and it went straight down. And so now it's Lu Guangzhou, who is two points away from sealing the match. And the air is now coming very quickly off Yuran's racket, which means Lu Guangzhou has two match points in this first singles rubber between China and the Netherlands. This time though, Yuran got the angle he wanted across the port. Saving one match point. 20. Can he make another? Okay. It's full focus for both players at the moment. There's so much riding on this match. Lu Guangzhou hoping to get China off to the right start. But they simple win in straight games is what he would be hoping for as the overwhelming favorite. While Joran Kuerthel will be hoping to get a set of China to begin with. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> He's that happy was with that. A big yell! From Lu Guangzhou at the end there. I think he everyone has. was holding their breath for a second to see if Yoran was going to get that back. He's really saved himself here, Lu Guangzhou, I feel. It was certainly not looking like it was going to go his way in the second game, but he's come back, he's fought hard, and that's, you know, what champions are made of. 21-15, 21-19. Straight game victory in the end for China, but take nothing away from this man. Joran Cueco doing really well. Putting up quite the fight. And uh, there you go, match point again. We had this net exchange here. He went for the tap and then it just over committed and he was just able to play it over his head. Just unfortunate. There's the relief. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the yell. That's what it means. Every point, every game, it matters so much to these players. Lu Guangzhou coming through in the end. And China take the lead, but there's more action coming up. He Jiting and Zhou Haodong taking on Ruben Yile and Thies van der Leck.
Welcome from Aarhus, uh, the sights and sounds of this beautiful city. That is Aarhus Cathedral. It is the tallest and longest one in the country. And it's just a five minute walk from where we're at, at the Sarah's Arena, bringing you the badminton. But it is certainly a pretty city. So we're back on court one with action in the Thomas Cup between China and the Netherlands. We've just witnessed men's singles where Lu Guangzhou 